it was nearly, nearly as big as the media scrum in. Uh, no, come on around here. Nearly as big a media scrum as we had in Brisbane this morning. Yeah, come around. Close that. Okay, ready to go? Mark Jamison, Mayor of the Sunshine Coast. Well, very uh, exciting announcement uh, overnight or in the early hours of this morning from the IOC who have announced that uh, they are entering a stage uh, of uh, targeted dialogue with the bid for the Olympic Games in 2032. Um, and that's obviously a target we've been aiming at. Uh, and what it basically says is that the IOC recognises the quality of the planning and the objectives uh, and I think is demonstrating great trust in what Australia can do and in this case Queensland or South East Queensland um, and we'll continue now working uh, up a plan, uh, a collaborative plan between uh, our uh, Olympic Task Force uh, and the Australian Olympic um, uh, Organisation um, uh, with a, a view to finalising um, and being identified, named as the uh, as the host location for 2032, you know, prior to the Olympics in July in Tokyo. There's pretty much no other contenders now. The way they've done it, they basically said, "You're it, and that's stuff like that." Yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I guess, I guess, um, yeah, unusual terminology, but um, I, I guess. Um, Look, that is the case, and what that's demonstrating is a real confidence in our ability, what we've done, what we've demonstrated. Obviously, that started with a, the visit to the IOC in Lausanne about 18 months ago. Um, uh, but, but the reality is, I mean, the Council of Mayors has been working on this uh, since the 6th of March 2015. And as a delegate for the Council of Mayors, I met with Thomas Bark and John Coates in Sydney on the 30th of April 2015, so again nearly six years ago. And we were, we were there advocating um, not only for the attraction of the Games but for enhanced infrastructure. Um, the Games will come and go uh, and they'll be fantastic. They'll inspire youngsters, they'll inspire all Australians. Uh, they'll put um, Australia on show to the rest of the world. But what's really important is the focus on infrastructure and, and using that event to bring forward particularly investment in transportation and that's always been the objective of the uh, the Council of Mayors and that remains our objective um, and the reality is that in 2032 so in 11 years time there'll be at least another million people moved to South East Queensland probably more uh, and that requires much improved transportation and that's our objective. What sort of transportation uh, well, look, there's, there's a, uh, that all options are open, um, but clearly investment in rail will be critical, um, linking South East Queensland. Um, and, you know, we, we know that the rail line um, to uh, Nambour, uh, particularly the link between Beerbarum and Nambour, is a single line. It's been there since the 1890s. You know, it needs upgrading. We need to be able to move people around more readily. And this is an opportunity that, you know, we won't necessarily get in the future. And, I, and I'd urge you to think legacy all the time. What will the legacy be of these games? And the best example I can give you is look at Melbourne City. Look at the wonderful sporting legacy that's been left in the centre of Melbourne from the 1956 Olympics. Uh, and that's where it all started. Uh, Sydney was, you know, one of the great games, but whether they actually managed the legacy as well, I'm not convinced. In South East Queensland, with 11 years to go, we want to make sure that we do have outstanding connectivity for people between the Sunshine Coast, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Toowoomba, Ipswich, Moreton Bay and everyone in between. Part of, the, part of the vision for this that's been pushed by the Council of Mayors back since 2015 has been to have distributed games across South East Queensland to provide that push for the fast train network and for the other infrastructure. It's now being talked about as the Brisbane Games. Anastasia Palaszczuk was talking about maybe a couple of demonstration soccer games outside of Brisbane. Is that something that should be setting off warning bells? Uh, no, I think if you listen to what the Premier said again, she was probably responding around events beyond SEQ. Uh, 
uh, and uh, in reference to other parts of the state of Queensland. And, and whilst we want to share uh, the games with Queensland and indeed with Australia, the, the purpose for the Council of Mayors, uh, which are uh, uh, 10 South East Queensland councils, uh, is to uh, spread the benefit of those games around. And there will certainly be events, uh, uh, many events outside of Brisbane. I mean, Brisbane clearly will be the centre, uh, but there'll be events here on the Sunshine Coast, on the Gold Coast, uh, and other points in between. What events are we expecting to meet? Does that work uh, out in look, that kind of detail? No, uh, look, I think there, there, there are various examples around, but look, there's still a lot of work to be done there, and that includes working with the various sporting federations around where the best locations will be. But there's, there's no doubt in the minds of the Council of Mayors that we want a distributed model. We want to see uh, small councils like the Lockyer Valley or Somerset and Scenic Rim, uh, and whilst they accept they won't have um, Olympic... Uh, um, games or athletics or tournaments uh, in their area, um, they can benefit uh, by perhaps having training camps. Uh, certainly they will benefit by the greater exposure of South East Queensland uh, that the world will have uh, and uh, that will add to their tourism into the future as well. So you know, we'll, um, we are one level of government working with state and federal governments and the Olympic Committee to make sure we do this as best we can and that there are as many beneficiaries as possible. Mayor, what, what sort of support are you getting from the Olymp uh, Olympic Committee to help fund bringing some of this, um, this infrastructure forward? <coughs> uh, well, look, John Coates, the President of the Australian Olympic Com Commission, is a really strong advocate and has done a tremendous job with all the experience he has uh, assisting us in working with the IOC. Um, and the Olympic movement and Thomas Bark has made this very clear. They want to see uh, what the Olympics can do for host regions. Uh, they want to work with us around enhancing our transportation networks and moving people around. Um, and they are, they are a very influential group. So, uh, you know, that, that's why we've always seen hosting the Games combined with a city deal involving all three levels of government where we've got a focus, a long-term focus on what is critical infrastructure. Uh, will benefit us in the long run. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, look, these things are always challenging. Um, there's no easy route, uh, and there will be uh, you know, lots of toing and froing in terms of priorities. But uh, I urge our federal and state colleagues, you know, to put politics aside and concentrate on what's best for Queensland and what's best for South East Queensland in terms of uh, investment and infrastructure. You're talking about population growth and the need for transport infrastructure. But even with the population growth we've got at the moment, the housing infrastructure isn't keeping up and it's becoming very difficult, very expensive. How do we deal with that? Because that doesn't really fit into the transport plan, does it? Um, well, if we can make transportation more readily available for people uh, in areas that aren't considered the centre of town, then that becomes a benefit. Um, I mean, the Sunshine Coast is a good example. We need commuter Tra uh, transport and, and the, uh, the the rail, fast rail and the Camp Cost Corridor is a great solution for that. Uh, but we also need uh, an effective public transport network uh, and obviously our mass transit plan uh, is designed to cater for that. Um, you know, beyond that, I, I am very empathetic and very sympathetic to the challenges that are being faced from a homelessness point of view. but. I'm doing everything I can to try and help there and I'm encouraging the various groups on the Sunshine Coast, whether they're community groups uh, or uh, government agencies, as to how we can work better to help that. But, you know, whilst they are connected, I don't think we should dis dismiss one um, uh, when it possibly provides some great solutions for the future. What about places like North Queensland that are going to miss out on funding for infrastructure but aren't set to reap any of the benefits? Well, why would they be missing out on infrastructure? Because they're not going to have the funding because so much is going towards... Well, uh, that, well, that just needs to be managed. I mean, we've got 11 years and, and there's, a, there's a big full stop in 11 years' time, a deadline, if you like, for us to meet. Um, you know, th this won't uh, necessarily take away from funding that, you know, North Queensland or Central Queensland or Western Queensland receives. Um, in fact, whilst there are some... Um, mayors who have 
uh, let's say, uh, not advocated for the gains beyond SEQ. There are many others who have, and the majority of those communities can see only benefit for themselves. I mean, the, the coastline of Queensland will be aired all around the world, almost daily during the games. Uh, people will look at it uh, in, in amazement and wonder, how the hell do we get there? So, you know, I think we can make that work. I mean, I know um, through my role as the president of the LGAQ, uh, many of those mayors in Western communities, you know, can't wait for this opportunity because it's a, a new awakening for tourism in their regions as well. Uh, and of course, you know, for SEQ, once, a, once an Olympic region, always an Olympic region. Uh, and, uh, you know, we will mine that well into the future as well. But how would the rest of regional Queensland benefit? Uh, well, there would be training camps. Um, I mean, once we were announced as the, uh, and that hopefully will be in July when the process is finalised, that SEQ is announced as the um, host for 2032, we will start to see activity almost straight away. I mean, the procurement that will need to be generated all around Australia, um, uh, we need to have a Queensland focus on that in terms of you know what's being what's being manufactured in. Townsville or Cairns or Mount Isa or Charleville that can be employed at the Olympic Games. Um, uh, what events are going to occur in Australia uh, as a prelim to the Olympics in terms of various sporting events and you know business conventions, all sorts of things that will come our way. Um, as we get closer to the Games we'll see sporting teams want to come and acclimatise and use various facilities and they may be equestrian facilities for instance, they may be sailing, they may be swimming, they may be athletics and a variety of others. Uh, you know, uh, that, that won't all be able to be catered for in Brisbane. That'll be dispersed across Queensland. Um, and as I say, the long-term legacy of just raising the awareness of who we are um, will be tremendous. Other than transport, um, how do you see the Games supercharging the coast and could it change the projections for growth and population that you're currently using as part of the planning scheme and things like that? Um, I'll start with the last part. Um, the Sunshine Coast has never failed to, to miss a growth target since we started measuring growth. Um, so, uh, and that's done through the state government in terms of what the forecast for growth might be. Um, you know, we're seeing incredible growth right at the moment as a consequence of the COVID crisis and people seeing the Sunshine Coast as a very safe area to be. Um, Adding the Olympic Games to that, I think, will provide prove the place as being more attractive to people, and we will see more people come here. Uh, I mean, we, we've got some of the world's best triathletes live here because they recognise that we staged two of the world's biggest triathlons. Um, the economic growth on the Sunshine Coast, uh, the this will, I think, bring forward the development of our city centre. Uh, I would like to think it will bring forward the development of a major convention and exhibition centre. Certainly it should ensure that our stadium uh, upgrade is finalised and that's two stages between now and uh, 2032. The, the one we've got in, tr in train now where we're still waiting for the final $20 million from the federal government uh, that will give us seating of around 16,500 or 11,500 in the stands and 5,000 on the hills. Uh, but by 2032, we want that to be a, a full stadium, seating around 24,000 people. Now, now that don't mark that down as a games cost. We're doing that anyway, because as a growing region, we need that. And it'll form part of the 85% of facilities that are already available in South East Queensland. Uh, and the, the, the remaining 15% obviously will require funding. Um, uh, but as a region, we need to invest in that sort of infrastructure. Uh, and again, you know, with, with all we're doing around things like technology, uh, our submarine cable, you know, we're going to be in a fantastic position. And again, think of those sweeping visuals of the Glasshouse Mountains, the Blackall Range, the pristine beaches of the Sunshine Coast. Um, as people, you know, glance away from whatever tournament uh, uh, or events are going to be staged here on the Sunshine Coast, um, you know, that's money can't buy that. Tremendous. All right. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Get a few cutaways. A few cutaways.